Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Vision here, and in this video, I am going to show you the solution for question 6 from the Jan 2013 POA paper 2. If you want to see the solutions for the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. Now, before we get into the solution, a bit of a disclaimer. The topic that is on this question is non-profit organizations. Now, there is a bit of that topic left on the current iteration of the CSEC POA syllabus, but the majority of it, relative to what it used to be before, was stripped away. The items I'm going to be covering in this solution include things like a subscriptions account, an income and expenditure account, a bar trading account, and a creditors for bar purchases account. Now, some of these things will still be useful to you, but for the most part, the current iteration of the CSEC syllabus has none of these things. So if you want to skip this video, that's quite fine. All right. If, however, you want to check the solution out, then by all means, let's get into it. Okay, so as per usual, we'll take a read of the question. So it says the Merry Men Sports and Social Club presented the following information regarding their business. So the first thing that they give us here is a receipts and payments account. Now, this item is on the current iteration of the CSET POA syllabus. And what it is, it is simply a cash account or a bank account or a single column cash book. We have a debit side which records receipts, money coming in. So it's an asset account, debits to increase, credits to decrease. So you have a regular opening balance of 9,000. You have subscriptions, which are membership fees. That's the major source of revenue for nonprofit organizations or clubs, as we used to call this topic back in the day. We have gifts, so that, that's also known as donations. Interest on savings, so that's money coming in from the interest on the savings account. Bar takings. Takings is another word for sales. Now, these clubs often had bars or cafeterias or canteens or food courts or whatever you want to call it. And they would sell things to their members, drinks, food, etc. So, of course, that would provide some cash coming in. And, of course, it has to be recorded or accounted for. And finally, lunch and tickets. Now, these nonprofit organizations, because they weren't buying goods to resell or providing services as a way to earn revenue, they often had to engage in fundraising activities. So in the solutions to most of these questions, you're going to see quite a few things like luncheons, barbecues, social days, family days, all sorts of things. And you'd have to figure out the net revenue from those things. But we'll talk a bit more about that a bit later on. So those are the inflows or receipts, as we could see, because they're on the debit side of the receipts and payments account. On the credit side, we have payments for expenses. We have rent, purchases of bar supplies, 12,006, bar expenses, luncheon expenses. So remember I said you have to find a net profit or loss um, on those uh, fundraising activities. So we'll, we'll deal with that a bit later. Loan more, so we're buying an asset here, a non-current asset, other expenses, and we have a closing balance carried down from the credit side, which will obviously be brought down on the debit side. So it's once again, a regular bank balance. Okay, let's scroll down and check out the additional information. So we have a set of stuff here, one column for the 1st of September, 2011. So that, well, that column would contain the opening balances for the items identified here. And then we have another column dated 31st October, 2012, which would have the closing balances, the corresponding closing balances. So we have subscriptions in arrears and advance. So remember subscriptions is a revenue account, a revenue item, sorry. So we have sometimes revenue owing, which is an asset or revenue prepaid or paid in advance, which is a liability. We also have owing to bar suppliers and bar inventory. So owing to bar suppliers, as like a trade creditors. Bar inventory, that's a stock from your bar. And we have a couple other items down here. Rent owing, which is an accrued expense, but you'll note that there's no opening balance, just a closing balance and valuation of club furniture. So we have an opening balance of 26.5 and a closing balance of 24.2. And we have a note down here. What does this note say? The list of balances does not include the lawnmower bought during a year, which is depreciated at 10% per annum on cost. Okay, so that's probably going to come into play a bit later on. Let's check out the requirements for the question. Okay, so the first thing they're asking us for is to prepare the subscriptions account for the year ended 31st October 2012 for five marks. Then they want the creditor's account for the bar purchases. Okay. The third thing they want us to do here is the club's income and expenditure account for the year ended 31st October 2012. Now the income and expenditure account is their version of the income statement. But of course, it's going to look a little different and I'll show you exactly what I mean by that. Then we have some little theory stuff down here. 
which we'll get into. So let me come back to this stuff. Let's get the subscriptions account going, shall we? Okay, so as I mentioned for subscriptions, it is a revenue account. So credits will increase the revenue account and debits will decrease the revenue account. Now, let's start populating this item with the opening balances. So if we go down to the additional information, we'll see in the opening balance column, subscriptions in arrears 340 and subscriptions in advance 290. Subscriptions is a revenue. Revenue in arrears means accrued revenue or revenue owing, which is a current asset. And assets have debit balances at start. So you're going to see subs in arrears brought forward or brought down 340. Similarly, subs in advance has prepaid revenue. And prepaid revenue is a liability. And liabilities have credit balances at start. So you're seeing on the credit side, subs in advance brought down. Let's deal with the closing balances for these items, shall we? So we have at end a closing balance on 31st October 2012 for subs in arrears of 460. Now that's still an asset and it will still be brought down on the debit side of the account, as you can see here. But prior to being brought down on the debit side, it has to first be carried down from the credit side. So you're seeing that here. Similarly, for the subscriptions in advance, which is prepaid revenue and a current liability, the closing balance is 220, which will be brought down on the credit side. But prior to being brought down on the credit side, it will have to be carried down from the debit side, like that. Okay, now we only have one other item with regard to subscriptions, which is in the receipts and payments account, which is on the debit side. This is members' subscriptions. So this is the total amount of money we have received from our members with respect to subscriptions. And if it's on the debit side here, it would have to be on the credit side. So we're seeing it here, 5,400. Now there's a missing figure. So most times when you all are doing T accounts for expenses or revenues, the missing figure they want you to find is usually the income statement figure. And it's found by simply populating all of the relevant information inside of the T account and then balancing it off. And that's exactly what we're gonna do here. We have two items on this side. We have three items here. So we're gonna add up the items on the credit side and subtract the sum of the items that are currently on the debit side. And that's gonna give us the income and expenditure figure or subscriptions earned of 5,590. So of course, when you put in your totals, when you add going down now, your total on your debit side will be the same as the total on the credit side. Okay, so that's the subscriptions account. Let's take a look at the next item. Okay, so they wanted us to do a creditors for bar purchases. Now, that's simply a creditors account, but basically it's a creditors control account. So as we know, creditors is a liability and liabilities have opening credit balances. Now let's go down to the balances figures and we are seeing owing to bar suppliers, right? So bar suppliers as the bar creditors, the opening balance is 3,400. So we're gonna put that on that side there. And of course, the closing balance, as we can see here, is 3650. And yes, it will also be brought down on the credit side. But prior to being brought down on the credit side, it has to first be carried down from the debit side, as we can see there. Now, there's only one other item that the question gave us that will go inside of the bar oh, sorry, the creditors account here. And that's the it says purchases of bar supplies. So that should actually say payments to bar suppliers, right? Because the figure we're working out now is actually the purchases include the actual purchases expense, right? But of course they use these words kind of interchangeably sometimes. So you have to keep your wits about you and know what is what, right? So of course, if it's on the credit side here, it's going to be on the debit side in the T account, right? So you're seeing receipts and payments 12,006. And the balancing figure, which will be on the credit side, will be the bar purchases figure. So of course, you're going to add up the items on the debit side and subtract the item on the credit side here. And that's going to give us the purchases figure of 12,850. So now, of course, when we total up both sides, we're going to have the same total of 16,250. Okay, so that's it for the creditors for bar purchases account. Let's take a look at the income and expenditure account now. Okay, so as I mentioned, the income and expenditure account was the non-profit version of the income statement. But you head it up, right? Sports and social. Oh, sorry, I forgot to put the word club, didn't I? All right, so Merry Men Sports and Social Club income and expenditure account for the period ended 31st October 2012. So they won't have like sales revenue and these things, although we did talk about bar takings, but we'll head up income. Now the first item under income is, well, there's no one right order in which you have to put these things. I just kind of like to go in the order of appearance in the receipts and payments account. So the first thing we're seeing is subscriptions, but this is the actual money received. 
not the income and expenditure account figure we formed back in part A. So if we pull that up, we could see that that figure is 5,590. The next item I'm seeing in the receipts and payments account is gifts or donations of 200. So we're going to put that in. The next item I am seeing is interest on savings, which is 350. So we're going to plug that in as well. Now I'm seeing bar takings, 225. But don't forget, we had bar expenses on the credit side, and we also worked out the purchase, the actual purchases figure for bar. So we're going to leave that space blank for now, and we're going to go straight to lunch and tickets, 4,500. So once again, remember, we had lunch and tickets. That's the revenue coming in from the sale of the tickets for the luncheon. And we had lunch and expenses, 2,800. So what we need to do is net off that figure, those figures, sorry. What I mean by that is you're going to take the inflow of 4,500 and subtract the outflow of 2,800 to get 1,700. So let me close up my bracket there. <laughs> okay, so net lunch and profit. Now, in order to find out the gross bar profit or net bar profit, if there was one, we need to do a bar trading account. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so I'm not heading it up fully. I'm just putting bar trading account because it's not something for which the question specifically asked. And it also doesn't have to be done, but it's how I'm choosing to calculate the profit earned from the bar activities. So the first thing I'm going to put in is, well, the sales. But of course, in nonprofit entities, they usually refer to the sales from those bars or canteens or cafeteria as takings. So we're going to put bar takings as the first item here. Now we're going to put less cost of takings. Or we're going to go down to the additional information and we're going to see bar inventory. So we have opening stock and closing stock. So we're going to put the opening stock first. And of course, we're going to put the purchases, which we worked out in part B using the creditors for bar purchases account as 12,850. And of course, from that, we are going to subtract the closing bar inventory figure of 1,800. And that's going to give us a cost of takings or cost of sales of 12,250. We're going to subtract that from the bar takings figure and give us a gross bar profit of 10,250. Now, most times that would be the end of it. But if we go back up to the receipts and payments account, we have another item related to bar, which is bar expenses, 4,700. And all bar related expenses had to be included in the bar trading account. So we're going to subtract bar expenses of 4,700, and that's going to give us net bar profit of 5,550. So now, after all that working, we're going to go back up to the income and expenditure account and include the net bar profit of 5,550 in the income section. We're going to total up the, all the income figures to get a total income figure of 13,390. And now we are going to consider the expenditure items. So if we go across to the receipts and payments account and look on the credit side, we're going to see a lot, lots of candidates for inclusion in the expenditure section. But of course, we have to go through it with a fine tooth comb because certain items, for example, the bar purchases, uh, sorry, the purchases figure for bar, bar expenses, those were already dealt with as we saw just now in the bar trading account. Also, luncheon expenses was, was already netted off against the luncheon um, tickets, sorry, the, the revenue coming in there. Lawnmower is a non-current asset and we don't put the purchase of non-current assets, capital expenditure, in the income and expenditure account. So do we have anything to go there? Well, yeah, we at least have the rent figure of 2,400. But don't forget, remember there was a figure down in the opening and closing balances section, rent owing. So there was no opening balance, but there was a closing accrued amount of 200 for rent. And what do we do with accrued expenses? We have to add them. So rent will be 2,400 plus 200, which is 2,600. Next item I'm seeing here is depreciation of the lawnmower. So let's go down to the additional note that tells us the list of balances does not include the lawnmower bought during the year, which is depreciated at 10% of per annum, sorry, on cost. So we just saw that the lawnmower's cost was 5,000. So we're finding 10% of that 5,000, as you're gonna see in the working across here, and that's gonna give us 500. There was also another non-current asset here, valuation of club furniture. So at the start of the year it was 26.5, at the end it was 24.2. So why would the value of furniture go down? Maybe we sold some? Well, if we did, we, we would probably have seen a receipt for the sale of the furniture up in the recent payments account. So apart from things just getting lost or being disposed of, the most logical reason for the decrease in the valuation of furniture is depreciation. And to find that out, we'll simply find the difference between the 26.5 and the 24.2. And we're going to see that here. 
And there was just one last item, I believe, which we could push directly from the credit side of the receipts and payments account of other expenses, 1900 Now we're going to total up these four items to get total expenditure of 7300 And that's going to be subtracted from the total income of 13390 to give us a... Well, we would normally call it net income or net profit of 6090 But under non-profit organizations, we call that a surplus of income over expenditure. And if it was a loss, we call it an, an excess of expenditure over income. Okay, all right, so we just have a couple of very quick things to do. Let's take a look at those. Okay, so the first quick item says, state the name of the section of the balance sheet in which subscriptions in arrears appears. Subscriptions in arrears is an accrued revenue, and accrued revenues are current assets. Okay, so the next item that we have to answer very quickly here says, state the name of the term used in place of capital in non-trading organizations. By non-trading, they mean non-profit. So the term used in place of capital is accumulated fund. All right, and there's one last part here. It says, show the total value of the club's non-current assets show working, and it's one mark. All right, so we had two non-current assets. We had the furniture, which was 24,200, as per the information in the closing balance column. And we also had the lawnmowers. So remember, we, we bought the lawnmower at 5,000, and we depreciated it by 10%, which would leave a value of 4,500. And you're going to see a little working here, 5,000 minus 500. Where did that 500 come from? That's the depreciation, 10% of the 5,000. And now when we add those two figures together, we get 28,700. And that's it for this question. Okay, guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question six from the Jan 2013 PUA paper two. If you have any questions about the content of this video, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you when I can. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check my website where you'll find some useful POA handouts. As per usual, guys, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.